Welcome, friends. In today's episode, we will focus on the second biggest cause of the 50-year decline in the real economic growth of most European Union countries. As we will show, this problem isn't limited to EU countries but is also affecting many other developed nations. We are the Czech Way Think Tank a small scientific team from the Czech Republic that uses science to find a way to return the real economic growth of the European Union to the level achieved by Western countries in the 70s. Come and chat with us on Facebook. The public and media are familiar with the EU's alarming trade balance with China, so we won't dwell on it. Instead, we'll focus on what this balance doesn't show us, what remains hidden, what governments don't talk about and what the media doesn't report. We'll take a closer look at our mutual trade and its impact on our companies and the devastation of our economies. For comparison, the EU budget, with all subsidies combined, was 100 billion lower than the EU's negative foreign trade balance with China, which is causing very serious damage to our economies. It might seem that we can replace our massive deficit with China with a surplus from other countries but the economic growth of most EU countries is declining. So what's the real problem? Let's take a closer look. Let's talk about our economic pond being drained. Year after year, there's less and less money in it, and we have to top it up with public debt just to grow at all. We lack a metric to measure this capital drainage accurately, and our European companies suffer from unequal conditions. In this video, we'll show you our game-changing technology, point 5 of the Czech Way program. In 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization, WTO. This phase of globalization was exceptionally advantageous for the European Union and other Western countries. Western companies quickly invested in building their own manufacturing plants in China to take advantage of the extensive and cheaper workforce. This significantly reduced their production costs, and consequently, their margins grew rapidly. Although it's a negative trend for the EU, and the trade balance has already reached 400 billion euros per year, we believe that the deficit itself is not the second biggest cause of the decline in real economic growth in the EU. So what is it? At the beginning of globalization, high margins were fuel for strong European companies. They allowed for massive investments and solidified their leading position on the global market. These companies created great conditions for the growth of their subcontractors, small and medium-sized enterprises in the EU. In this phase of globalization, it's different. The deficit with China cannot be replaced by surpluses from other countries, because in those markets, European companies are fighting tough competition and selling with much lower margins. Large European companies are losing their position, which has a negative impact on small and medium-sized enterprises that are lacking orders. When a customer in the EU buys a bag from a European company, for example for 35 euros, the company might produce it for 4 euros and 38 cents in China, at 8 euros and 75 cents for other costs, and pay 12 euros and 16 cents in taxes. This model returns a total of 31 euros and 6 cents to our market. These funds fuel our economy, and small and medium-sized companies can breathe. With the development of the internet, the rules of the game have changed. Chinese companies bypass the European middleman and sell directly to customers at our prices. A bag of comparable quality is now often sold for 30 euros to destroy European competition. It's produced for 4 euros and 38 cents in China, with 1 euro and 29 cents for other costs. They pay less in taxes, just 6 euros and 73 cents, because they don't pay income tax or social and health insurance in the EU. While in the first case 31 euros and 6 cents remained in our economy, with every bag sold through a Chinese e-shop, 22 euros and 63 cents drains from our European market. This is devastating for our market. As can be seen from this comparison, the 1 billion we lose due to Chinese e-shops is definitely not replaced by exporting more cars for a billion. This disadvantage, which fundamentally affects our economy, is not reflected in our trade balance. 
Why is a billion not like a billion? Because net profit margin is the net profit after deducting all costs, including taxes. While a European company selling bags retains 370 million from every billion in revenue, the Volkswagen carmaker generates only 40 million from a billion. It is precisely this net free cash that strengthens our economy when it is reinvested in Europe. Let's add the example of importing services from the USA to our comparison. It is clearly visible from the net profit margin that the trade balance, as we measure it today, does not provide us with all the necessary data about what is beneficial for our market. So what is the real trade balance? This term is not recognized by economic theory, but the impact of our deficit with China is deeper than we think. And paradoxically, the American deficit with the EU may not be so critical for them. That is why cooperation between the EU and the USA is necessary on new metrics and rules for trade. Chinese investments in the EU are in most cases not beneficial for our market and contribute to draining our pond. The profits generated from sales to European consumers do not strengthen capital accumulation and EU growth, but are redirected to strengthen China's economic base. China uses all legal accounting mechanisms to avoid paying taxes on profits in the EU. Chinese companies in Europe are hindering our GDP and supporting the growth of China's GDP. To grow even a little, we are topping up our pond, which we ourselves are letting be drained. We are increasing our public debt. Why are we actually doing this, when it's not beneficial for the EU? It's not just a theory. Although we should work on more sophisticated metrics, there is already a large body of professional work today that confirms these practices. Let's look at how the European Commission is addressing this issue. One of the four pillars that the European Commission established before its election was competitiveness and growth. In previous videos, we have continuously shown you evidence that most EU countries achieve lower growth in their economy in each subsequent period than in the previous one. Now let's look at the competitiveness of European companies against Chinese ones. And how would the European Commission want to strengthen competitiveness? Not only labor, but all costs are more than six times lower in China. It is not even theoretically possible for competitive conditions to be leveled by any technology. Competitive conditions can only be leveled by changing the rules. If the Chinese want to sell cars in the EU, let them produce them in the European Union under the same conditions. Our video shows that a European company with high costs cannot defend itself against manufacturers from China, because their total costs are much lower. So how is it possible that the European Commission, even with its advisory teams, would propose and push through such a naive pillar number one? It is obvious that we must support innovation, but that is not enough. Without a change in trade rules, the decline in economic growth cannot be stopped. Dear friends, in our opinion, unequal trade competition is liquidating our small and medium-sized business sector, and it survives only because of subsidies. The capital outflow due to disadvantageous trade conditions is the second biggest reason why we have to increase public debt, and the amount of this debt is an existential threat to the European Union itself. We are convinced that the long-term growth of all countries is possible by expanding the existing pie, and not just by redistributing it. We would like to prove, with the help of a completely new, game-changing technology, that the economies of EU countries and the entire world can grow at the same time, but not under current WTO conditions. The vision of Point 5 of the Czech Way program is to design and build a global macroeconomic simulator which will help to advance knowledge in the field of economics to another level with the help of artificial intelligence and a large number of simulations. Why is this game-changing technology? If we had built this simulator 50 years ago, we would have much higher economic knowledge today. There certainly would not have been a 50-year decline in the real economic growth of EU countries, nor a disadvantageous trade balance with China. From the very beginning, we would have set such WTO conditions that would not have been disadvantageous for the EU.
In this episode, we have already introduced you to the second point of the five point check way program. As a reminder, in previous episodes, we introduced you to point number one, the world's first profitable form of transport, according to the check way concept. What exactly do we mean by profitability? Today, when you travel by car, you have some costs. You pay for the car's depreciation, fuel, but the user does not pay for the transport routes, and they have to be subsidized. Profitable therefore means that the new form of transport is so efficient that it covers all three mentioned types of costs and even creates a small profit. In the next episode, we will go into more detail about how the global macroeconomic simulator can increase the living standards of all humanity. Thank you not only for watching this video, but also for helping to push the project forward. There are already more than 5,000 of us since January of this year. We promise you that we will not stop, and together with you, we will find a way, with the help of increasing knowledge in economics, to ensure a rise in living standards for all of us. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode here on YouTube.